My name is Dishnu. My name is Ruby. And I would like to talk to you about our beloved Lord Ganapati, who resides in our Sri Ganapati Temple here in Wimbledon. I will do part one of the speech, and Ruby will do part two of the speech later. We all love Lord Ganapati and we love to come to the temple and take part in all the festivals. But how much do we really know about him? When you look at a picture of Lord Ganapati, what do you see? You may know that he is the remover of obstacles and you may even know many of the Puranic stories associated with him. But look closer and you will find a deeper meaning behind all the symbols that are in front of you. The rat, his vahanam, or vehicle, represents the lowest form of animal. His elephant's head represents the highest form of animal. Having also the body of a man symbolises that he is Ganesha, the lord of all beings. His large ears and head tell us that he was gained wisdom through listening and reflecting on the eternal truths of the Vedas. His head and trunk are curved to resemble the shape of the Aum, our most sacred of the symbols. Representing the primeval sound of creation, our most powerful mantra in the prayer and meditation. The importance of the elephant is also that it is a herbivore eating sattvic food, a calm and gentle animal that also has an immense strength, which it uses only when needed. The elephant's trunk is one of the few instruments in nature that can perform both growth and subtle actions. It can uproot a huge tree as well as pick up the tiniest of needles. It signifies the need for us to be able to develop our intellect, our powers of discrimination in both the gross or material world and also in the subtle or spiritual world. In his right hand, he holds a hook on kusam in his, and in his left hand, he holds a noose or parsam. These tools are used back home by mahouts, elephant trainers, to tame the wild elephants Symbolically, the mind is like a wild elephant running from here to there in chaos. So we must use the ankusa to tame and control our mind and then use the pasa to tie it down and keep it close to us. Only then we can concentrate, contemplate and meditate to find God. In another hand, he holds a dish of mordecum. The sweet with hard outer shell signifies the reward of sweetness, of knowledge that will give the spiritual seeker joy, satisfaction and contentment as he travels along the path of enlightenment. It also indicates the importance of eating the correct sattvic food in order to progress spiritually. Lord Ganesha's large belly is set to contain the whole universe and is symbolic of the way we should live our lives. We must be able to accept and digest whatever experiences we go through, be they good or bad. Throughout our trials and tribulations, we must be equal-minded and realise that all experiences are learning experiences and will bring us closer to God. Lord Ganesha sits with one leg folded and the other leg resting on the ground. The leg on the ground tells us that we can live in the world like anyone else. But the leg pointing upwards tells us that our concentration and meditation should be ever focused on the Godhead within. Rather like the lotus that he holds in his hand, which grows in the stagnant water, the lotus plant raises its flowers above the water line so that the purity of its petals will not be blemished by the polluted waters underneath. In the same way, we can live in this world but remain unaffected by the materialism and negative qualities of our surroundings. 
at the feet of our Lord is often spread a huge array of different kinds of food. The food represents material wealth, power and prosperity and indicates that if you live a life of high ideals and principles, these material benefits will always be available for you. Although you will not be attached to them and they will therefore not hinder your spiritual progress. The little rat, or mushikam, represents desire. Rats, by nature, are very greedy creatures who will run here and there, nibbling and hoarding far more than they need. If a man has desires, he can waste his whole life running here and there, fulfilling one desire only to replace it with another. Instead, we should be like Lord Ganesha and keep our desires firmly under control, never allowing them to overwhelm us. According to the Vinayaka Puranam, the rat also represents the demon Gajamuhasura, who was destroyed by Lord Ganapati. The Lord actually used his tusk to kill the evil entity, the same tusk that he later used to write down our holiest of books, the Mahabharata. Interestingly enough, according to the Puranic stories, all the vehicles of the different gods and goddesses represent the particular asuras, demons, that they defeated. Symbolically, they represent the ignorance of man which can be kept under control only by God in the form of knowledge. There are 32 forms of Lord Ganapati and each has a wealth of meaning and Puranic stories attached to it. They include Bala Ganapati, depicting him as a child, Hiramba Ganapati, with five heads, ten hands, three eyes in each face and riding on a lion. Vaidavignesha, showing his fighting form with many weapons held in his hands. Shakti Ganapati, with Goddess Lakshmi, and Ritya Ganapati, a wonderful image of him dancing. Each of these forms has a wealth of symbolism attached to it. Each will take us closer to the goal that we seek. We just need to delve deeper to reveal the treasures of spiritual and philosophical knowledge that our ancient sages have left for us to enjoy. I hope you enjoyed exploring the symbolism of Lord Ganesha with us. Hinduism teaches us so much about life when we pray and look deeper into deities that we have in our Wimbledon temple. We hope you enjoy this voyage of discovery. Thank, Thank you. Banakam, Nangal Matan Tamil Padasale Mana Berger, Indra, Nangal Vinayagar, and Talai Pinkur, Pace of Andalo. Nam in the Kariati Tarungum Podem, Vinay Raymond Tan Tarangas in Rome. Podivaha, Nam Arizam Podukuda, Pilia Suli Portitan Iron Bikin Rome. Pilia Suli and Bade, Om and Ramandaratan Surkamahum. Pilliari in nature, a cariatium are ambipad, saiva marabe. Nam in the coil at the generalum, Udal gonna come pilliari ke uridahum. Gonna pati, yon at the intervalum. Adinal avernum may a podum nalvalil nadatabar. Tavergal air pedamal path of colbar. A hayal nam edit the carium yavalum city para. Mother will be niker or lay nod a kindrum. When I had in Totum with the Asamana there, a very good yarn name Humum, Pale Vaira Munde, Pale Vaira Irpadan Pura, a lawla hungaleum, San Nuller Kever in Badahum, a very good yarn, a very yarn name Hutter and Totumal Pada, Arnim one and a woman like a Padrinja. When I could cook, I in the Karangal Irpada, I'm current and room like a Padrinja. Or a caratil pass a mere country, the paday talium, in the kail angusum, the 
அளிக்கும் தொல்லையும் குறிக்கிறது மற்றது அபயகரம் அது பக்தர்களை காப்பாற்றும் மோதகம் உள்ள கை தண்ணி வணங்குபவர்களின் பாவ புண்ணியங்களுக்கு ஏற்ப அருள் கொடுக்கும் தும்பிக்கை நீளமானது அங்கு என்ன நடந்தாலும் தட்டிக்க கும்பல் நிலை உள்ளது விநாயகருக்கு மூலிகம் எனப்படும் பெற்றாலி வாகனம் உண்டு இந்த சபையில் வாமதவர் என்பவர் இருந்தார் அவரை கிரவுஞ்சன் என்ற கந்தர்வன் ஒருமுறை அவமதித்து பேசிவிட்டான் கோபமடைந்த வாமதவர் கிரவுஞ்சனை எலியாக மாறும்படி சாபமிட்டார் கிரவுஞ்சன் பெற்றாலியாக உருவெடுத்தான் அந்த பெற்றாலி பராசர முனிவர் என்பவரின் ஆச்சரியத்துள் நுழைந்து தொல்லைகள் கொடுத்தது அதன் தொல்லை பொறுக்க முடியாத பராசர முனிவர் விநாயகரை வணங்கி அந்த எலியை பிடிக்கும்படி வேண்டினார் விநாயகரும் அந்த எலியை அடக்கி தாக்கிய வாகனமாக்கி கொண்டார் இவ்வாறு விக்னங்களை தீர்ப்பதால் அவருக்கு விக்னேஸ்வரர் என்று பெயரும் உண்டு விநாயகரை பல்வகை பூக்களாலும் இலைகளாலும் அச்சிக்கலாம் அவற்றுள் முக்கியமானதும் அவருக்கு மிகவும் பிடித்ததும் அருகம் பொல்லாகும் விநாயகரை வணங்கும் போது தலையிலே குட்டி தோப்பு கர்ணம் போடுவது மரபாகும் எனவே அருகம் பொல் நாயகரான விநாயகரை வழிபட்டு சகல சௌபாக்கியங்களையும் பெறுவோமாக பாகுண்டா நல்லவன்